This is a cubic inch of sound, and over the past half a week, we all watched Alita Battle Angel. What? The movie. The movie. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we watched it, so. Oh, yeah, you mean as opposed to the, the <laughs> anime version? <laughs> it's been like a little flip anime. Yeah. I thought you meant as opposed to the manga. Yeah, so anyway, um, I'm Luke, and, and I'm a robot. Not a cyborg, just a robot. <laughs> I'm Nick, and today is No Rules Tuesday. I'm uh, Kevin, and uh, I'm here to confirm it's not actually Tuesday. I'm Dan, and I'm not a square. I'm Tim, and I am not an angel, nor a battle. <laughs> Sorry, but Paul. you are Alita. Um, I think that's to be determined. I'm not sure yet. Okay, Tim so is just elite. First things first, we got, we got to mention it. I can't not mention it. The eyes. The eyes on the lead of the Silver eyes. Okay. Huge. Can, we just, can we acknowledge the fact that Mars's war strategy, as presented in this movie, was to build an army of anime girls to fight for them? <laughs> I think that's valid. Is based. Yeah. They weren't anime girls. They were they were just girls with big eyes. I'm 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 to sticking with that. I'm sticking well, with that. Well they had that's big eyes won. to be to be modeled after the anime. So in universe they're anime girls. <laughs> like, clearly they were way ahead of humankind <laughs> <laughs> but like only those kinds of cyborgs had anime eyes none of the others yeah mars is just maybe weird, they were just protagonist eyes did we see the other ones have big eyes yeah they had big eyes yeah, yeah. all right yeah i just I mean, question how that got through many like it got through so many stages of development where people had to look at it and be like oh man big eyes character that's so awesome yeah we should do this I mean, it was like a little off-putting at the beginning, but then I just, I just stopped noticing. I, yeah. for me, the opposite happened. I was just like, I was moderately aware of it at the beginning because I'd like heard about it, and the more I watched it, the more strange it felt. <laughs> that there's just one person with huge eyes and a CG face, and everyone else was normal. I got yeah. mostly used to it, but like it was, it's always in the back of my head. Eyes. What bothered me way more was the hair animation whenever she was like moving. See, it did not my, look realistic most of the time. My original thought was, okay, that like they probably just made her entire face CGI because like they didn't want it to look weird with a CGI body. But then everyone else with a CGI body and real face showed up. I'm like, okay, obviously that was not their logic. Yeah. Uh, they no should have just made an animated it. movie. Honestly, they, yeah, they, they should have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would have been cool, because a lot of the backgrounds and stuff in the setting was obviously CGI, taking place in the whole future scape, like, steampunk-ish type thing, you know? I did like the design of the world. Like, it didn't look real, but, like, it looked cool. The world design was very cool. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, in general, just the world building was pretty awesome. Mm, I like the city. I, I think that if if the CG was, like, just a little bit better, then it would it would have been fine. But the level that it's at right now, I'm like, I wish it was fully animated so that it could just be a cool 3D animated movie instead of, like, weird live-action elements thrown in. I like the live-action movie. Yeah. I felt that that the live-action made it harder to make it colorful without seeming out of place. I felt a lot of it was brown-washed, I think is the term. I thought it was colorful, and when it wasn't, it was just because it was, like, daytime in, like, the dirty, like, undercity. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt like that took up more time than was maybe necessary. It, it could have been, like, more visually stimulating if they made it animated and also less visually unsettling. <laughs> it's very Uncanny Valley. Yeah. The, the faces on the not bodies was what really kept throwing me off, because there were a lot of those. Like, it was Spy Kids, like. <laughs> well, actually, it's Robert Rodriguez was the uh, director, I believe. Yeah. Check that. The guy who ruined yeah. my dream journal. Yeah. yeah. Also, was I the only one who thought, like, Iron City kind of seemed like a cool place to live? Like, everyone's like, oh, we want to go to the better city. Like, all these people here with, like, their massive studio apartments, and none of them seem to really be starving for the most part. Like, they all have it pretty um, good. There are people that are being hired to rip out all of your cybernetics and just leave you on the street. No, also, those were murderers, and they hired people to hunt them down. Like, that was... That yeah, was, I mean, I, the I people wouldn't who feel hunt very them down, safe. Also, like, they faked crimes for just to, like, kill people they didn't like. 
I wouldn't feel very true. safe if there were like a bunch of murderers going around and it's like, oh no, no, no worries. We hire bounty hunters to murder the murderers, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. But like it seemed like a cool place to live. The crime, look, right? Okay. It seems like bit. a cool place to look at and see in a movie. I wouldn't want to be there. Maybe I'm... visit. It might be cool to visit, but <laughs> it might be cool as like a park. Like a theme I don't park. know. Even it would like be pretty the cool Hugo as a theme kid park. who was all like, Man, all I want is to get to the better city. Like, when Alita broke into his room and creepily watched him sleep, like, he had this really, like, he had a huge room for, like, a city of equipment. Well, he yeah. was a criminal getting illegal money. Yeah. He was saving all of his money to live. I don't think he would have spent it on a bougie like, apartment. He did. Okay, so anyway, plot time. Tim, you've never explained a plot. Maybe you have. I don't know. What's the plot? All right. The, the plot of Alita Battle Angel is that uh, this um, cyborg person was left in a junkyard, right? And the scientist Ito uh, finds her, and it's like, ooh, that that looks like it's alive. And then it turned out to be alive. So he took it back, and he's like a it's like a robot engineer guy. So uh, he put her back together using her uh, his daughter's cybernetic body, I think. And, and like, it's just like a body. So she's it's not like her or anything. So this uh this new cyborg thing, uh, Ito names her Alita after uh, his daughter who was killed. And uh, Alita just tries to find out who she is because her memory was wiped. Or not wiped, but she doesn't remember anything. And she's trying to find herself throughout the movie. And uh, she meets this guy, Hugo. And uh, Hugo also tries to help her find herself. And, uh, you know, they end up being uh, end up being friends and such. And they go on a bunch of adventures, I think. Make a lot of bad decisions along the way. That was a pretty good summary. Way. Yeah. That was, a, that was a good way of describing it. All yeah, sorts of like, shenanigans. Yeah, I feel like I just watched the movie. <laughs> Yeah. The the whole thing with Alita having the 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 cyborg body that Ito had built for his daughter, that was it seemed kind of weird. It seemed weird to to like name somebody after your daughter, you know? Mm. <laughs> name somebody who is an adult as well. Yeah, he definitely was like giving like the I have like issues vibe. Like he immediately went into protective dad mode after knowing this girl for like I don't know, like two hours. He was like, don't go outside after dark, very angrily. I mean, he it was an expensive body. <laughs> that's true. He, he, that was, that's a decent reason. Yeah. My body is expensive. Seem, he didn't seem too upset when, well, I mean, he seemed upset because, like, you know, like, she was, like, practically killed. But he didn't seem too upset that the body was destroyed when it got destroyed. In an absolutely wild scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The mm, action like. was insane in this movie. I really liked every single action scene in this movie. I liked a lot of the action, but then <laughs> there was this like like some of it felt a little bit like off characterly off like, uncharacteristically goofy. Like when the uh Christoph Waltz guy Ito uh shows up to the bar <laughs> and those three guys all get thrown out of the bar at the same time. That just felt like a scene from a Three Stooges episode or something. That scene, whenever it's he was a scene running, from a manga, all right. <laughs> whenever he was running around, literally, with the comic. Hammer, I was I was laughing because it seemed like he had no idea how to use the hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, he just he, has this. He's been ba- a bounty hunter for like at least a few years, I think. So it was like so. such a Looney Tunes wind up. He's like hold circling it over his head, doing the big. <laughs> then, yeah, <laughs> he has a comically oversized hammer with like a jet thruster on it, so that it's he can awesome. actually swing the thing. <laughs> It's like something on making G mod. <laughs> <Just> like... <laughs> yeah, I, I, the action scenes I thought were very strong. Like when yeah, they went this like part. full CG and is kind of committed to the animated action, it kind of was got a bit more fun. I really loved the motorball fight scene. That was yeah. like my favorite part of the movie. Yeah, I also actually really enjoyed like the first motorball scene, like in the city um, course that they made. It was just really cool watching. It, it looked like they hired a bunch of like pro skaters to do stuff and it was just a really Did you fun guys scene to watch. Tony Hawk. He was in it? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, that would have been cool. If Tony Hawk cool. is still alive. In this movie, maybe Tony Hawk. Is Tony Hawk is still alive. Yeah, in 25 <laughs> whatever the, the year was in the movie. I mean, he's probably one of the first people who would become immortal. Mm. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, the, the science foundation of the world would agree with that ass- 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 uh, assessment. 
Yeah, like, I think well, so. oh, we, we need a test subject to put into our first cyborg body that's immortal. Who are we going to put in? And someone's just like, what about Tony Hawk? What if Tony uh, Hawk is the oldest teenager I know? <laughs> what if the big twist of uh, the big twist of uh, Nova is that he was actually originally Tony Hawk? He's to actually the Hulk. Yeah, Nova, I was going to say, isn't he that. Edward Norton? Well, the whole Nova, like, I want to say subplot, but it was also so such an important plot that calling it a subplot <laughs> seems weird. He's the actual bad guy, the big bad guy, but like. They never meet. They never really do. I mean, they kind of talk at some point. Um, mm. Indirectly. Indirectly, yeah, because he's speaking through uh, Vector. <laughs> <laughs> from Despicable Me. I could only think of the guy from Despicable <laughs> Me every time they said his name. He does have both magnitude and direction. <laughs> kind of. So from what I've seen, from what I quickly Googled, um, Nova wasn't really talked about in the manga at this point like he shows up later and they just kind of make him in this movie to have a villain but then there's like a huge cliffhanger at the end where like nothing actually happens with the villain and it just kind of feels weird for him existing i don't know if it's a huge cliffhanger but it's definitely it was definitely setting up for a sequel yeah which Mm -hmm. isn't going to happen probably well currently it's not happening which is and sad because I want to see a sequel. It reminded me a lot of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, obviously, this isn't a cubic inch of Zack Snyder's Justice League, <laughs> but in in that one, they set up Darkseid as the actual bad guy, and they have the Justice League fight Steppenwolf, who is like, he's there. He's he, I mean, he's bad, a band but he's not 80s. the bad guy. Yeah, it kind of felt bad for uh, Marshall Ali's character, like. He wasn't even conscious when he got murdered. No, yeah, I said that him. too, and everyone was like, well, you really feel bad for this guy? Like, I don't feel bad for him, but I just feel like it would have been polite to wait for him to be <laughs> conscious and then kill him. I remember being like, that was brutal and uncalled for. <laughs> I mean, no, it was probably called for to kill him. Like, he did, like, kill the, uh, what, the doctor's wife character, Sh- Shireen. Sh- he, like, killed her and, like, put her in test tubes That's harvested all of her organs it was kind of messed up okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I i had to like i i didn't realize what had actually happened there for a second until like i had to process it to realize like how brutal that actually was you know i didn't even process it and i didn't know that actually happened until you just brought it up right now yeah that's when he <laughs> uh he was talking to Alita, and he opens the box with all like the brain and the eyes. Yeah, I remember and seeing the box, and I'm like, "Oh, that's weird. Why are they showing that to me?" I think I just completely missed where they <laughs> said that was. <laughs> so wait, yeah. was she supposed to be still conscious, or was it was it just her organs? It was I... implied that the organs were all kept alive, so like I imagine the brain is still functioning, but the eyes she... the eyes were still moving around in there, which yeah. in a way that looked oh, like okay. it was conscious. Okay, well, that's messed just up. slap that thing in a robot body, and you're fine. I think that's pretty much the idea. Remember when they took the big guy out and it was just his spine? And it was like yeah. his head and his spine, the spine was wriggling, he looked like a worm. That's I said a, that yeah. he looked like uh, Jabba's kid. <laughs> Ra- <laughs> what, was his name like Rada or something? Yeah, Rada the Hutt. Yeah. <laughs> in general, there was a lot of like pseudo body horror in this. Yeah. At times, yeah. just actual body horror. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, near the end of the movie, there's a scene where Alita's boyfriend her dumb boyfriend don't even understand why she likes this guy um <laughs> gets stabbed through the stomach and it's like oh no he's gonna die um and the one way that they can save him is if they decapitate him and then take the head and hook it up to like alita's heart so that it can so it's still alive and then take it and then put him into a robot body and yeah. that was just really unsettling to be honest yeah, yeah. i i I, like, people have survived being stabbed before. I feel like they could probably save him. Well, that was uh, the sharpest blade in the West, it seemed like. <laughs> that would have been safer to be cut with. It means the wound has an easier time to heal. Sharp. Well, yeah. Also, they... The giant robot scanned his head and like, yup, he's dead. <laughs> it's like... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it just scanned that it was him. And then just, like, tr- trusting that Alita killed him. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the reason why they needed to 
like they couldn't just sneak him out was to get the get the cops off of their tail, you know? I understand that, but like the scanners on those robots really did notice that he was still alive. Could they have just like brought him out entirely whole? I mean, they, <laughs> they, like, they probably to didn't bother to to scan that way. They're like, oh, it's his head. What is he going to yeah. be an alive head? That is true. Mm-hmm. The legal system's kind of consistent because, like, when like. The uh, bad guy from Deadpool murdered that guy and said, look, you killed that guy. I'm like, it, or is no one going to, like, follow up and check the fact that it was clearly his sword that killed him? And, like, in next time, they don't follow. They see a head, they just assume, okay, he's dead. The other <laughs> guy can tell him, no, I see the head is still alive. They're not going to believe him. They'll follow up this legal system. Whatever those robots see, that's the law. See, and this is why it would be a bad place to live. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it seems like the real estate doesn't seem that expensive. Dan, you're such a libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Oh my god, it's so economically it. viable to live in this city. I, I'll, I'll move there right now. Yeah, this place would be so easy to gentrify. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Like, open up a couple like coffee shops and they're like, that neighborhood's gonna get real nice real fast. They have a lively sports district or already, like, the market's there. Oh, they also have an absurdly gigantic sewer system. That too, they could really <laughs> expand there. Yeah. That Dan, was cavernous. Dan experiences the fall, and it's like the worst <laughs> war that humanity has ever seen, and he's like, oh my god, the economy is gonna be in shambles! <laughs> <laughs> just no, want- Dow Jones is down! <laughs> <laughs> I just uh, want to be able to have a nice, spacious bed. You can have that. Yeah, I just know. move to, like, Mississippi or something. Or oh, Zolom. Mississippi, yeah. Like Monster. yeah. I, don't, I feel like Zolom's going to be, like, more crowded. They, they don't really have any expansion potential. They're literally on a floating island in the sky. Yeah, but I feel like they just banish people willy-nilly. That's true. That's a good point, actually. But we only see... Great. We only see one person with the mark on their head, and I feel like most people wouldn't be like the doctor and remove it. I feel like a lot of I people. I feel like they would, that. because if you're from there, they'd probably like not like you. I guess. You'd feel like they would try to present themselves as like superior to the people from Iron City, though. And yeah, like, that's what I'd oh, but they didn't get sort of... exiled. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, people will. I mean, they have the dot on their heads, and the people from Iron City don't. It's it's like the Dr. Seuss book about the <laughs> Sneetches. <laughs> wow. Why did the doctor and his wife get expelled? Like, was it because the daughter got sick? So that's what, what I heard, but maybe it was It's probably reason. because they were nice people. Oh, okay. At least yeah. the doctor was. No liberals allowed in Zalem. <laughs> okay, I see. Can we talk about the fact that Vector literally is Blade? <laughs> Like, Blade mm. the, from Marvel. Oh. We I'm excited can. for the Blade movie. I, I saw him and I'm like, oh my god, that dude's dressed just like Blade. He looks just <laughs> like him too. And then I thought about it for a bit and I'm like, he he's literally cast as Blade. He played Blade <laughs> in this movie before he played him in Blade. It was a tryout. <laughs> One thing that um kind of rubbed me the wrong way for some reason was in that scene in the rain where Alita... And her boyfriend guy were like, when they kissed, and she said like, oh, you probably don't like me because I'm not human, not fully human. And he's like, you're the most human I've ever met. I just feel like that seems somewhat derogatory to just say that she's human when she's not, you know? It just seems like he's saying she's normal. Would you say she's culturally appropriating what it is to be human? No, I would say he was being insensitive. Oh, okay. It, it, to me, it 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 felt like he was calling a, like a neuro. That was the answer that she wanted normal. to hear, though. That was the answer she wanted to hear. But well, Alita yeah, was a person older. originally, wasn't she? She, no, was. she was from Mars. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, people from Mars. <laughs> well, maybe, they, maybe they're not called humans on Mars. <laughs> Mars gives you bigger eyes. That's just unrelated to the cyborgness. <laughs> Actually, yeah, maybe that's the explanation. We've only seen the big eye people from Mars. Yeah, so. I guess I guess humans have never been to Mars, so we don't know if eyes do, do get bigger or not when you go to Mars. <laughs> Elon Musk just like does a press conference and he has anime eyes one day, and we're all like, "Whoa!" That implies that Elon Musk is going to go to Mars and then come back, <laughs> <laughs> and we're not even going to know. Yeah. It's just like he secretly goes to Mars and comes back, and he's like, 
oh, damn, I have big eyes now. Everybody's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> what if it turns you into a cat boy? That would be pretty epic, but according to Alita Battle Angel, that's not true. None of them were cat boys. Yeah, Good I think point. we saw her Good ears, point. and I don't think they were cat ears. <laughs> okay, but do you guys imagine that cat girls have human ears in addition to the cat ears, or do they just have the cat ears? Off, like, off the top of my head, I imagine that they have both, but I, that doesn't really make... I mean, well, none of it really makes any sense, but <laughs> I guess having both makes less sense than having just one. Say both, because it's less creepy. I don't think it's creepy as long as the hair covers. Yeah, as okay, long as I creepy. don't see it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Bit odd. But hey, who, who's excited for uh, Ed? Not not Ed Helms. Edward Norton. I get the Eds mixed up. It's Ed Harris, Ed Helms, and uh, Ed yeah. Norton. It, it, if there isn't a sequel, then it's really weird that they cast Ed Norton. As, like, the main villain, considering he has, like, three seconds of screen time. Yeah. I do think this kind of... I think this movie was in, pr like, pre-production, like, right as the uh, Disney-Fox merger started, like, actually taking effect. So I think planning-wise, like, they may have intended for that. Then this, you know... Yeah. Disney's I'd, like... I'd be surprised if they didn't make a sequel, though, because I feel like this probably did pretty well, didn't it? At the box office? From what I've seen, it didn't. <laughs> Oh, that's strange. Critically, it didn't do very well. That kind of thing. Oh. I hope Typing it gets a noises. sequel, because I am invested enough to where I would want to see more. And am I really going to become a manga reader for this? And the answer is maybe, because I'm kind of interested. You read Blue Heaven. Does that make me a manga reader, though? You it read doesn't manga. make you a manga reader, but you have read manga. Uh, it, it wasn't a hit, but it wasn't a flop. It, it just did, kind of it, it made did less it back enough. It did pretty well. It did less than they were expecting, but like not. So I mean, that means it failed. <laughs> kind of. I wouldn't be surprised if we never see a sequel. Yeah, but there That's is a shame. There, there is a decent sized fan campaign going, and like the director says, he wants to do another one. So like, I don't know, if there's enough demand, it could happen. Yeah, it seems like there definitely is a following. That'd be neat. I just, solid cast. just wish the movie had been a little bit different, <laughs> you know? I didn't have massive problems with, like, any particular thing. I just had small problems with a lot of things. And somehow I feel like if she didn't have the big eyes, like, I, I legitimately think that people were probably turned off by that. Imagine yeah, watching the trailer and that. being like, oh, I don't want to watch weird big eye movie. I honestly... I would have preferred just all the cyborgs have, like, anime faces at this point. I think that would have looked better than the merging of anime and faces, anime bodies. I think that a lot of the action looked like like Spy Kids, which isn't too surprising considering Robert Rodriguez. Yeah. Um, but they they either could have tried to make it more live action and, like like, have more practical effects and kind of just, like, keep it more grounded... Or they could have gone the opposite direction and made it fully animated and gone, like, fully stylized, you know? Yeah. Y you could say, when it comes to the CG, that their eyes were bigger than their stomachs. <laughs> <laughs> their eyes were bigger than, like, any part of their body. <laughs> <laughs> their eyes were bigger than the rest of their body combined. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of eye. Yeah. I did not know. James Cameron was a, a producer, and he helped write the screenplay. I didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, I don't think the script was good. <laughs> I uh, I was just like, especially like the first act, I was watching this, I was like, this script feels like it was written by an AI. Like, it's hitting every stereotypical a action-adventure story beat, and like, nothing felt super unique, except for the world that already existed before the movie was made. That's fair. I didn't really mind the beginning. It kind of fell apart near the end for me. Because mm. um, it, it yeah. felt like there was no good like climax. It was just like sort of climax and then like things happened. Um, pretty much near the end, Alita challenges... Um, what's it? Gruishka is the giant huge guy who has been like chasing her the whole time and like completely demolished her body <laughs> at one point. 
Um, she just, like, kills him pretty easily. It's, like, it's barely an issue, honestly. I mean, she got um, an OP body that's faster and stronger. Yeah, but it's just, you know, like I said, it feels like there is no climax. It feels like that Story -wise, was... Story-wise, it makes sense. If, like, I was expecting that to be, like, the big final battle is her, like, <laughs> finally overcoming him. But it's just, it's, it's barely an inconvenience. Um, yeah, well, she's pretty OP once she gets the uh, full body. I, I saw that scene where she just, like, obliterates him. And then saw that there were, like, like five or ten minutes left in the movie. And I was like, wait a second. This movie isn't going to resolve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't know how much money, uh, how much uh, time was left in the movie. I... She she pulled up her sword at the end of the movie and then it ended and I'm like I'm sorry what <laughs> <laughs> it felt like there was half a movie missing yeah it, it seems they like set up like a lot of things to be resolved in the sequel like with the whole like identity theme and uh, just like the villain and stuff it seemed like there was a lot going on that wasn't going to be resolved either way there was definitely a lot of stuff as much as they could and then they just had to cut it off at some point and like what's the best place to stop it uh the death of the the boyfriend yeah so getting into that um because after she fights grishka or like just kind of kills him not even fights him um is when she kills vector which is definitely not a fight she just like stabs him after talking to the real bad guy nova through him and it's it's only after that, right? It's after that that her boyfriend tries to get to the big floating city by, like, climbing up there. And yeah, she's yeah, like, no, yeah. don't do that. They have defense systems that will, like, shred your body up into a million pieces. And then it does. <laughs> what, are, what, are, what are the odds that he's not dead? And then, like, in 300 years, some doctor finds the body with the head. Because the exact thing thing happened to him that happened to alita like honestly know, like, really like, like, so in a head i don't even think it's gonna take that long this is a manga he's probably just like gonna come back yeah i agree <laughs> like story-wise there's no chance that he's dead for good it it yeah. felt very weird because they had the whole thing where you know they put him into the cyborg body yeah. Um, and they had to, like, decapitate him and everything to do that. And then the first thing that he does after that is <laughs> die. And it was like, okay, so either that was completely pointless or he's not dead. And it's pro probably number two. Basically, what I found out with this movie is that if we don't see the head physically destroyed, they're not dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, and then after that, which still isn't, like, a climax, like, that was just kind of a scene, you know, like a dramatic scene. Um... After that, there's just kind of like a, a montage slash time skip where she becomes the, the motorball champion. <laughs> and uh, apparently that's the one way to get to Zolom is to be the motorball champion, which seems like a weird way of doing it. You know, like if you just get really good at this sport, you get to you get well, to go to the cool city. It's probably like the big leagues up there and they're running out of good people. What I'm, what I'm they're confused like about. Too fast. I don't know. Is that, why didn't she just try to, like, climb up the thing to Zalem? Because when she was going after her boyfriend, she straight up jumped over the shreddy thing. So, like, why couldn't she just make it up there? Why didn't I think the whole gets... team of robots do that in the flashback? Yeah. It seemed extremely effortless for her to, like, just jump over the only defense well, <laughs> between her and the... Well, she was still on a horizontal part. At a certain point, it gets vertical, and it's going to get hard to do that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, she, jumped, she jumped over it at the point where she could, and then she could just go while it's still maybe going down. Multiple. I guess maybe. I think they but, might have multiple. Oh, uh, well, if they have multiple, then my plan doesn't work. And it and could come she back just has, She just has to be a good athlete. Well, she, that's what the time skip was. She became the best athlete. Yeah. Um, well, well, we also, don't know that she won, technically. I'm pretty sure it was like that. That She was gearing up for her <laughs> final champion what match. What I thought was weird was that the main dude who sends people up there for being the best, he killed. So who, who's in charge now to send no. her up for being the best athlete? He didn't actually send people up alive. He would take their organs and send them up. He was a scam. Like, it was a scam yeah. thing. He was, he was, like, the criminal head of the criminal organization. Well, I'm pretty sure... I thought that he was also running the motorball organization. Yeah, he was. I don't, well, he I... Wasn't, I don't think he was running it. He was running the factory where, like, the hunter, hunter warriors... We're like getting their bounties from, but I think he was just like a competitor. Like, I mean, like he, maybe entered, like a coach. Like, even if he was like the CEO or the head or whatever, they could just replace him. The I mean, CEO the, of Motorball. Yeah. 
Motorball seems like a weird sport. Yeah, I kind of like it though. It seems it's, interesting. It, it, it seems like it should more just be a race than like that. Why even have the ball? Yeah, it, it, it seems it, it, more like a fight to the death. Yeah, I was just gonna or say a, a lot of incapacitation. Died. Yeah, I I feel like it makes some sense as I I feel like the the city motorball was a lot better than the professional one as a sport. Yeah, uh, because, because then yeah, like you could have wrestling. you could you could have teams and then just like it's there's one goal. I say it's like wrestling, like the the professional ones just for go, <laughs> but then there's actually like actual wrestling slash motorball that happens in like a smaller scale just not fun to watch so you're saying the reason that alita beat everybody else is because it was rigged it was rigged against her yeah she just true i mean she killed all of them which is against the rules but it was no rules tuesday i guess yeah (laughs) i don't think she killed that i thought she just like demolished them you know they can get put back together. Yeah, <laughs> they're robots. Like I mean, they're cyborgs. cyborgs. That sentence is very funny on its own. <laughs> she <laughs> she just demolished them. Just them. Okay. I mean, even if she just demolished them, she clearly she doesn't care about like killing. She just does it to anyone else just for no reason, pretty much. She did start killing early on. Her first like, fight, she killed two people. I, I mean, she was killing people who were trying to kill her. I feel like that's yeah. the most reasonable reason to yeah, kill someone. Yeah, that was also in Motorball. So I'm saying that I don't... Even if she just destroyed them, I don't think she would have cared that... Oh, okay, yeah. But I think them. I think the reason why people weren't freaking out, like, oh my god, they're breaking the rules of Motorball, was because they weren't dying. That makes sense. Mm. Otherwise, who would, who would watch that? Nah, just kidding. People like would totally would. watch that. Yeah. The boyfriend annoyed me. I didn't like him, Hugo. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, I, he never did anything, like, horrible for the most part, but well, he was always doing something Yeah, stupid. he did. He, he did his entire horrible. livelihood was pretty awful. Yeah, but we didn't, we, we, we watched him, like, steal that one really, like, you guy's arm, and, like, that's all we saw. The only other one we saw him stop, and that was it. It's like, we never see him do anything. I mean, but we know he's done it. And we yeah. did see him steal one guy's arm. Yeah, but yeah. I, I kind of seem like a d- Dan, d- stop swearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. he just seemed like a terrible person. And that scene like that we talked about before at the end where he was running up to Zalem is infuriating. Oh, yeah, that was just him being stupid. He was that's, stupid. What I, that's what yeah. I mean. Like, his him as a character, it was infuriating. Because, like, wh- like at least wait a day... Before you've like woken up to, after you've woken up to try to kill yourself. I mean, they yourself. were at his house trying to find him. Yeah, he did have to go. He didn't. He had the choice to just leave the city. He didn't have to go up the city because there is a whole outside like yeah. nature place that's kind of cool. He could go into hiding. He did. They said they sealed off the city. Did they? Yeah. They just have a big water wall. I guess he has made a robot now. <laughs> No, well, the robots just skin. sink in water. They they're fine. Yeah, it didn't seem like that was a huge concern. The scene where Alita does go underwater was like it looked considerably worse than when she was above ground. No, I was yeah. gonna say it looked better because it was just entirely animated. It looked like it didn't look terrible. I thought that was fine. It I didn't looked really very strange to me. I thought it looked fine. Like I mean, it would have looked fine if it was a you know an animated movie. But it was supposed to look like real life, and it and it looks like a cartoon. So, uh, fun fact: the cinematographer for this movie was Bill Pope, who, among other things, has done the third Evil Dead movie, Army of Darkness. He did Spider-Man Two, Spider-Man Three, the entire Matrix trilogy, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Men in Black Three, The World's End, Baby Driver, the This, and he also is doing uh, Shang Chi. Jeez, that's a lot, especially considering. I didn't think the cinematography in this movie was very good. <laughs> he's had a he's had a, like a, he's had a very uh, I think even career. Yeah, I mean at this list. I remember there was one really standout shot that I really liked was all of the, like the dude who had like the chain knife fingers. Yeah, he, like shot them in like a swirl, and she like went like in the middle of it, and it looked really cool. And then she just like fell apart, like like Lego. <laughs> oh, he also did the uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, Cosmos. That's a, a weird <laughs> one thing to have done. Yeah. And freaks and geeks. 
So he did a lot. He's done a lot of stuff. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> some good, cool. some bad. I mean, what I'm hearing is that this guy probably just wasn't very important to all of the things that were being yeah. made because I feel like they're just of such varying quality. Well, no, I mean, he's a well-known cinematographer. Like, he's one of the more famous ones. I think. I think sometimes if you just don't really have a good movie, I don't think cinematography can save a bad. Well, movie. I mean, no, I having... just don't think that any of the action was like especially well framed, except for like the one shot that Kevin mentioned. Yeah. I like the action scenes. I thought they were. I, I, I like them. Every uh, the time action... she did an axe kick, it was awesome. The action scenes were fine, but the cinematography themselves, in my opinion, was very. I don't even know the meaning boring. of the word. Cinematography. <laughs> he really doesn't. <laughs> Wow. I, like I thought that the the idea behind the action was cool, and like the the moves that were getting pulled out were cool. You know, like the things that the people were doing. Yeah, the choreography. But, yeah, nothing about how it was shot was especially like impressive. Yeah, I really like the flow of the action. I wonder nice. if that's just a product of it being like, wait, these manga panels. How do we do them in real life? How do we put all of these in here? <laughs> I hope not, because that would be a really dumb reason for the <laughs> cinematography to be lame. They could just shoot it like the way a normal movie is shot. I'm just thinking that like, hey, these are iconic poses that we got that everyone would recognize if they read the manga. How do we put them together in motion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the action to me felt very Spy Kids, which is why. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking, like, it, it feels like Robert Rodriguez had a bigger influence. Yeah. That, like, I, that that's why it, it surprised me when you said this guy did the, like, cinematography for Scott Pilgrim and Baby Driver and stuff like that, because those are, like, spectacularly shot. And then, mm -hmm. like, this film and a couple others that you mentioned are just, like, kind of mediocre. It, it seems strange that he would have such varying quality of of cinematography. For being so well known, it was fine. He's had a he's had a variety of a career. Yeah, I guess. He also did Team America: World Police. What is that? It's the uh, it's the movie, the puppet movie about Team America, where they had the song. The yeah. the only new thing you said there was puppet. Everything <laughs> no, else was information that was implied. I, I have. have... The puppet thing's the most recognizable quality of that movie. I I, I know I know absolutely. what you're talking about, but you definitely didn't describe it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about it besides that it's puppets. You know where it goes, Merca song. Like I that. have heard of yeah. that. I just That's didn't know where that was from. Movie. Funny movie. It's from okay. the people who made South Park. I still they don't know what it's Alita about. Battle Angel in the movie. Yeah, that's her title is the the Battle Angel. I know in the, the first ball. in the first motorball Alita game, motor like, uh, the first motorball game, like the real one she was in, they're like, "Wow, face of an angel, but with the heart of battle." And I'm like, "Wow, you almost said the title, face of an angel, body of a battle, <laughs> all the powers of an angel and all the abilities <laughs> of a battle." Wow, that was a also lot of abilities. that that scene where she got the uh, like the the freaky alien body. Um, and it like formed to her subconscious version of her own body, and it just that, that was just a little bit strange, especially when the uh, like nurse assistant lady was like, "Oh, she's older than you thought." Yeah, <laughs> that was just a really yeah. weird scene all around. Yeah, Luke well, and I watch uh, watch this movie together, and <laughs> I remember telling him to go back because <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kyle was also there watching the movie a little bit. And we had a little bit of uh, discourse about what that actually meant. <laughs> what, was it? what was it? Can you give us a summary? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I'm just. I was just thinking because because of the whole like the commentator calling her Battle Angel. I'm like commentators just come up with good names. Remember when that guy came up yeah. with Spider Man? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was uh, Bill Pope's idea because no, wait, he didn't do Spider Man one. Yeah. <laughs> Two and three. Imagine one. if Peter Parker had never gone to that wrestling match in Spider-Man 1, and he just went around calling himself the human spider the whole time. I wouldn't have sold any comics. Probably not. <laughs> What's your name? The human. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, the, the first motorball scene, or 
the first like professional motorball scene really reminded me of pod racing. I just got complete yeah. pod racing vibes from it. <laughs> I really liked all the all the scenes. Like the it made me happy. All the pod racing scenes. Yes. Yeah. I like seeing futuristic races with wacky commentators who say funny things. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is I don't fun. care what universe you're from. That's gotta hurt. Imagine being from another universe. Yeah, that doesn't happen in Star Wars. Yeah. Doesn't happen in real life either, as far as we know. No, it's going to be the new sequel trilogy. It's going to take place <laughs> in another universe. There's going to be a crossover. Like, Poe Dameron's just going to show up in the new trilogy. Like, <laughs> when you said Poe, I thought you meant the panda at first. <laughs> well, no, he, he'll be there yes. too. Okay, They're really good. embracing the multiverse. That'll be fun. <laughs> It sounds yeah, like I can't wait. Game. But you know what else I can't wait for? Alita Battle Angel 2. I don't care how long I have to wait. <laughs> Would watch I'm it. I'm just going to read the manga. Maybe if we just wait like 300 actual years, then it'll happen in real life and it'll be it'll be like we're doing it. I don't think the housing situation will be as nice as it was in this movie in real life when you're in the slums. Is that all you care about? That's the thing I'm really holding on to. Dude, He's got a one track mind. Nice apartments. Yeah, you're like gonna was... go live in Zalem. <laughs> no, I want to live in the Undercity where they all have these. The yeah, you haven't seen Zalem really. What if it's like infinitely better, and that's why everyone wants to go there? Well, none of them have seen it, so how do they know? Maybe there, well, there's pictures. Nobody from Zalem wants to go for to the to the ground city. So, well, yeah, maybe they're just you know a bit closed minded. Huh? We don't know. I would check Zalem out, but if I had to make a prediction, I think I would probably stick with the uh, Undercity. Just seems like more of a fun place. Okay, you can do that. We all get to live in Zalem. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> nice. I'll, I'll send mail up the tube. You, try, try. I don't think they're they're big tubes. <laughs> yeah, there are big tubes. The little things they're playing with that tubes that send stuff up. I thought they were like oh, anchors. Yeah. They, no. they said something about them being tubes that send cargo up to the top. And then in the flashback, when we see it get cut, we see that it's hollow on the inside, so they can send stuff up. Yeah, I thought it was just like a big anchor that was the big hollow. Yeah. I don't know. (laughs) The lines make the city float away. So when they cut cut the wire, why didn't a bunch of assorted objects fall out? It was dark out. They might have. Maybe they were just too lazy to edit that in. I don't think it was dark out. It was. It was nighttime. It was nighttime when they were climbing up the wires and all of her unit got wiped out. It feels wrong, but I don't remember enough to argue. They, they definitely said something about there being tubes that sent cargo up to Zalem. They did when they were yeah. sitting on the church that first time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was the giant tether thingies. But it's... I, I, yeah, I don't really know what else it would have been besides those. I think it makes more sense if Zalem is just really light, and if it didn't have those, it would float away. <laughs> it's just sitting on a big helium pillow. <laughs> it was not nighttime. Well, I'm sending a picture. Well, that's the scene at that's the end. That's the other scene. He's talking about the one where her unit got oh, you're out. Oh, okay. The war one. They're talking about when she, uh, they were like falling off, oh, and she like, used her sword the to like stay down the side. Then. Did. Did. I could cut it, didn't, it didn't slice open. Like the other time, it was completely sliced open and it fell yeah. down. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean now. Tubes. Tubular. It is. This movie that, uh, was tubular. Did you guys like it? <laughs> I enjoyed it. I it, was, it, was it was all okay. right. It was, it was very middle of the road, probably slightly better because some of the action was interesting. Yeah. But would you recommend it to a friend? Yeah. It's like a party movie. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I would I, recommend it, but not strongly. I wouldn't be like, hey, oh, oh, you man, you really need to see this movie. Just like, it's a movie that you can watch. It was enjoyable. I'd probably say, like, if somebody asked me if it was worth watching, I would say yes, but I probably wouldn't, of my own free will, recommend it. <laughs> I feel that. If you were being <laughs> you mind controlled, would you recommend yeah. it? If well, it depends right. who's the, whose opinion is mind controlling mine. Nova. Nova. <laughs> considering he's he's in this movie probably i'd recommend it at that point but doesn't paint him in a great light he may paint it as he may say it's like a propaganda you may not want people to watch it yeah but uh maybe but i mean 
it is a pretty pretty big movie that he stars in. It, it would look good on his resume. That's true. He was an actor. Yeah. It is also, always nice to be able to say that, like, you were in a movie as the bad guy. Not as yeah. an actor, but just, <laughs> you were the villain. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of documentaries could be. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I Also, looking at this picture of uh, Hugo climbing up the tube, it looks like all of the area outside the city is inhabited somehow because of, like, it's all cut up yeah, for it's farmland. Like farmland, yeah. It it looks like, me. I don't know if they did that, just because they didn't feel like, re, like covering up the regular land that they were shooting on, but, maybe there are people outside the city, and maybe I mean, it isn't actually s- sealed off. We see it is all farmland, so I think like the implication was that there's like limited settlements outside. Maybe. Yeah, but, but instead of the cool cyberpunk city, they just got to live on farms. Nobody wants to. Do Why that. didn't Alita go try and like recover his head? She I didn't think like the, of it. She kind of forgot. The assumption that bounty. That I don't know. She realized that she could do better. <laughs> she never actually collected the bounty. She just proved that he was. I think it was an instant transfer. Like no, they have to people. give the head in like the thing. Well, they had to go register it there, but then the centurion did the like little scanny confirmation thing that it did in the factory hall when uh Christoph Waltz turned in the stuff the first time. I doubt she cares very much about the bounty at that point anyway. There's a lot going on in her life. Yeah, it was a bit hectic. Why don't people move out of the city? Like, why don't more people move out? Like, it seems like the rest of the place is habitable. Because the properties are so cheap. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> Same nice. I was going to say something, but I forgot it. Tragedy in, in three words. Or is it a comedy? Nope. There's no there's no comedic elements whatsoever. Anyway, any final thoughts? Ruishka looks like a bionicle with a human face. <laughs> he was Russia. I, I realized that at the end. I looked it up. Yeah. Well, since since really? his name is Ruishka, both yeah, Gru right. and Vector are in this movie. True. True. Yeah. True. Okay, oh. so uh, next week we're watching Bo Burnham's Inside. It was a landslide vote. It was crazy. We never had a we never had a vote like it. Have we had a vote like it? Maybe, Probably maybe at one. I have point. no idea. I'm not sure. We don't keep voting records. We're not a municipal government. Yeah. Okay. Good one. Uh. Yes. Yeah, so that's exciting. We'll we'll probably find out what it is because um for those of us who haven't seen it, nobody has been able to explain it well. <laughs> you would like to email us you can at a cubic inch of sound at gmail.com and if you don't want to email us then you can at a cubic inch of sound at gmail.com